So from connected aircraft to AI-driven maintenance, we're going to discover how AWS is shaping the next frontier of aerospace and innovation with Tim's insights. As we look to the future, the aerospace industry stands, I, I think anyway, really on the very edge of unprecedented aviation. This has been driven from advancements in cloud technology. And in our final segment, we're going to explore you know, how is AWS at the forefront of this transformation, enabling developments in connected aircraft, predictive maintenance, and sustainability practices. Tim will provide some insights into the emerging trends that are you know, shaping the next frontier of aerospace innovation. We're going to discuss how our cloud technology is not only enhancing current operations, but I, I think also more importantly, paving the way for groundbreaking uh, you know, changes in how we design, manufacture, and operate aircraft. So, Tim, look, looking ahead and envisioning cloud technology shaping the future, um, what, what do you think are the current trends? What, what are those things that are happening that are truly transformational within the aerospace industry? John, I think one of the most exciting things right now is the explosion of connectivity options. And maybe I shouldn't use the word explosion in connection with aerospace, but uh, the, the, the growing number of connectivity options that we haven't seen before. So uh, as a lot of people know, we just launched our, our first uh, set of Kuiper satellites that will increase you know, connect ubiquitous connectivity. But airlines and air, airplane OEMs are looking to increase the, that connected ecosystem for what the airplane can do. So when you think about how much data a A350 or a 787 generates on an individual flight basis, whether it be from you know sensors on board aircraft engines or actuators and things to show how the aircraft is performing and, and send early signals to mechanics on the ground to optimize maintenance cycles, optimize uh, opportunities like that. Think about things that might be embedded in sensors that might be embedded in stow bins. So as a pass as the passengers are boarding an airplane, a gate agent gets an early signal to understand that the stow bins are starting to fill up so they can start to check bags early in the boarding process instead of, I'm sure everyone's been in that that airplane corridor when somebody's trying to swim upstream with the rollerboard because there's no room at the back of the plane and they have to check it up front and how much time that adds to the gate. Think about things like smart galley carts transmitting catering options down to the ground live in real time so that people understand, so that you know, food and things can be pre-positioned for when the airplane lands so that can optimize that turn time. Because from a commercial airline operator's perspective, anytime the airplane's not flying is dead revenue time. So anything you can do to optimize, to speed up that time on the ground is really critical. And then from a passenger experience standpoint, you know, how many times have we all sat in an airplane staring at that seatback entertainment, wondering, you know, why can't I stream? Why can't I just watch what I want to on Netflix today? Why am I limited if I'm uh, on a wide body international flight and the flight attendant brings the the shopping trolley around and there's you know, your two dozen bottles of liquor and maybe some cigarettes and some other things around? Why can't I have live streaming sh shopping options that allow me to you know, do shop right on the airplane and have things delivered to my hotel when I land at the gig? What are the types of things that can do that? So when you think about what the co increased connectivity can do, to the entire experience of aircraft, air travel and air aircraft, I think we're seeing some really exciting opportunities happen at the airline level, at the OEM level, and at the maintenance level. So that, that's one of the most exciting things to me from there. And then I think that, you know, going back to supply chain, I think what we're seeing from both Boeing and Airbus as they start to pr push airplane production to volumes that we haven't seen before, that's going to force levels of innovation that we haven't seen in airplanes production because to get to 75 airplanes a month, to get to 60 airplanes a month, you can't continue to just work faster, do things the, the same way you have to, been doing, particularly when you're talking about a challenged and smaller workforce. So the the interest in learning how to use things like the technician assistant I talked about before in terms of point, putting Gen AI at the point of use that optimizes the, the mechanics experience and allows him or her to you know, leverage what what might be a small amount of knowledge that they have from their direct experience, but le but taps into you know almost generations of, of knowledge that the company has before is really unprecedented. So I, th I think we're really at a, a really exciting time for innovation in aerospace, and I'm looking forward to what our customers will will lead us into.
So, and I, and I love the way you set out the, again, it's a data challenge, right? You show the sharing of data, the connectivity, the, you know, like we see in the automotive world, right? Whenever my car has got a problem, it's already communicated with the garage. You know, I'm able to upload a video of the car making the squeaky noise whenever I can get it to do it because no mechanic can, uh, so that they can listen to it and they can get an idea of what's going on before they arrive. But a lot of that, though, it can be challenging. And maybe you can sort of just give an extra level of detail on this. So, for instance, you know, I may have chosen to purchase the aircraft but rent the engines, or I may have chosen to purchase the entire aircraft and the engines and therefore intend to maintain it myself. And those different sorts of models, and the same for catering, the same for the, 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 the luggage story, those sorts of models mean that I'm either more dependent on you know, provision of engine maintenance as a service or baggage loading as a service or gate management as a service. So therefore, the ability to share data from the aircraft in transit to all of these agencies then becomes really tough. So what sorts of ways are innovative companies thinking about that ability to share you know, information seeming seamlessly and meaningfully with their uh, various partners in that space. Uh, I think it's, you need to start with what you said just a few minutes ago in terms of the volume of data that's coming off that airplane. So if it's streaming from an engine, streaming from a, a galley, whatever it is, the amount of, air, of data that's being generated on an airplane is probably vastly greater than the than what elements of that data are actually useful. So if an air, if an engine, for example, is performing as expected and it's it's operating with its normal constraints, do you really need to pay to stream and analyze that data real time, or do you only want it to understand what are the anomalies and where do I where do I need to focus on that? So that's the first thing is to understand you know, what are the type of edge compute areas that you want closer to the airplane, closer to the point of use to detect where are anomalies as opposed to standard data elements that you know, frankly, you could look at in batch or, or look at for trends over time. You don't need to see that data in real time. So that's one of the first things that people need to understand. And then I think the other thing is, if you have to look at how do all, all does this data come together in a common environment to understand what decisions do I need to make? So, you know, Airbus has been very, uh, I'll say at the forefront of a lot, a lot of that discussion through their Skywise platform. So they provide an environment that's, that brings together data from multiple uh parts of the airplane so that an airline could immediately see what's happening on board its airplane. They can make decisions around uh, maintenance cycles or repair cycles and things like that because they're integrated into that Airbus, Air, Airbus Skywise platform that has inputs from various suppliers as well. GE Aerospace is another company that does a lot of that type of work of bringing d data together and allowing companies to, to understand what's happening with the engine and when do they look at various maintenance cycles and, and spare parts and things around that. Excellent. Now, just switching a gear a little bit, it's it's kind of gone out of fashion a little bit in the last hundred and something days, but I just want to touch base a little bit on sustainability, if I can. Uh, so, you know, the aerospace industry, and it's not just the obvious, um, you know, use of fuel, et cetera, but the, more widely, the aerospace industry is heavily criticized, um, as is aerospace travel and space um, travel, heavily criticized for sustainability challenges. You know, what what is AWS doing to help customers, you know, in that space understand the sustainability issues that they have, and maybe helping to address some of them uh, in a meaningful way? Yeah, and I, I'll challenge your your first statement that sustainability may have gone out of fashion. I think you know regulatory environments and government policies may change, but certainly from a a customer behavior standpoint, what customers are expecting out of airlines and the aerospace industry continues to be that they want. You know, less impact on the environment, lower emissions, lower fuel fuel costs, which drives ticket prices. So the, those I don't think have changed. I don't think they will change. And we still see strong commitments from all the major players in the aerospace industry, whether it be you know, a company like Airbus that's aiming for net zero platforms, whether it be a company like Beta, who's just at the, the beginning of their life cycle, essentially developing a fully electric airplane. So the, the sustainability um, goals, I don't think have changed. Now, in terms of what that means for AWS, so if we look at two com companies, so if we look at a company like Collins Aerospace, for example, who's a major avionics provider, they have a system called FlightAware that uses AWS technologies to, in real time, provide recommendations to a pilot on 
flight path optimization f- to you know do things like avoid weather, turbulence that may be unpleasant to the passenger, but also how do they maximize fuel efficiency and emissions uh, burns? Now, the decision on on whether to take those recommendations is still 100% in the pilot's hands. So the the we're not taking any of the human decision making out of that, but it's giving that pilot real time feedback and real time opportunities to say, here's opportunities to save fuel and things like that. Qantas Airlines took that same challenge a few years ago with AWS, where they took a lot of their data that they had historically on things like uh, takeoff and landing angles, at flight paths, and how what were the types of things they could understand to minimize that fuel burn. And they were, through AWS, they were able to come up with a model that reduced their fuel costs by 2% across the board. And 2%, you know, when you just look at it from that standpoint, might sound like not Okay, 2% is not 100%, but when you think of how much an airline spends on jet fuel and the variable costs associated with that, it's really significant savings to a, to a company with a, the fleet size that Qantas does, or when you extrapolate that to what might be the potential for even all larger airlines. Oh, it's fantastic, and I'm glad to hear it hasn't gone out of fashion. It's certainly not my experience of any companies we're dealing with that there's been a sudden change and a desire to go back to you know the bad old days of heavy polluting and non-sustainable uh, businesses, which is great news. Now, if we look at another area, if we think about something like banking, you know, small challenger banks have come along, cloud native, all innovative, and they have challenged to the absolute root uh, of some of these larger, more traditional banks that have, that have become unstuck and are find themselves in catch up mode. So, how can small companies that are out there that are thinking, you know, I want to enter this market, I, I'm going to go and disrupt this market? You've given some examples of. Of, of some of the sort of urban transportation companies, you know, are, uh, how can you leverage AWS to sort of gain some of that competitive advantage to become a genuine disruptor uh, in this area? Yeah, I think it. this is really a, a key advantage to the cloud and to digital innovation, particularly the world of digital engineering. So, you know, the insurmountable costs of designing and building an airplane used to really get anchored in aircraft development. So you, know, you, you do your design, you'd build an airplane, you'd fly through a wind tunnel, you'd fly through a bunch of uh, prototype tests. They're all incre- incredibly expensive. Uh, and and for a lot of small companies, uh, in some cases, bet the, bet the company flights in a lot of ways. What we've done with, again, going back to companies like Joby and Archer or Boom Technologies, who's bringing back supersonic flight, is help those companies do a lot of that uh, computational fluid dynamics and that early stage flight design in the cloud itself. And what, you know, what has historically been the challenge there is you had if to do those types of high performance compute simulations required a huge investment in compute power that you might only use for a relatively short period of time. And then the, all that investment you have would, would essentially sit idle. So by moving those cloud, moving those workloads to the cloud, and we work with you know, partners like Siemens, for example, to, to allow companies to do this, they're able to leverage the you know, pretty much unlimited compute capacity that AWS has to run those simulations, to understand what those simulations look like, and to adapt their, their CAD designs, their uh, CFD designs, and run their PLM systems fully on the cloud without having to make those investments up front before they are ready to, to invest cash. And then when companies start to look at um, doing things like full stage prototype flights, they're starting to run live data streaming from that that airplane into the cloud so they can see in real time how various uh, systems on the airplane are behaving and how does that affect the actual flight or what how does that differ from what their expected results are. So this again, seeing that leave real time and they're leveraging that expandability and elasticity that the cloud provides without having to make those compute investments themselves. And they can take that cash instead and channel it into the actual airplane itself. I, I, love, I love the the way you said at the very start of this conversation that it's all about the aircraft and people's experience of the aircraft. So that ability to channel the cash back into the aircraft um, seems like a fitting way to sort of wrap some things up. But Tim, look, you're I the mean, expert on all the this. Tech- we're talking about the industry now. We're talking about air taxis that people have been talking about for years. We're talking about supersonic flight returning. We're talking about unprecedented capabilities in the defense sector. So we're really at, at a cusp of innovation in the industry that is just so exciting to be working with right now. And what, what customers are bringing to us, what we're learning from our customers, just is just provides so much energy to to my team as well. So it's, it's great to have this sort of uh, back and forth relationship with our customers to understand what, what truly is innovating in the industry. 
I'm going to put you on the spot, Tim, and say that we're going to come back and talk, hopefully, uh, about the defense sector in a bit more detail because everybody is very curious um, about how aircraft are increasingly being used as sensors, how drones are you know, fundamentally changing how people think about airbase platforms, uh, how low-cost, uh, if I could put it that way, low-cost units um, are taking down very expensive uh, traditional ways of thinking about air defense, etc., uh, so I would be, you know, very much uh, keen if we can if we can do that in a separate uh, a separate call, and I think you know it'll be exciting. But here's the thing, Tim. I well, I'm depends on yeah, geospatial actually, geospatial analytics and what that's bringing to you know, whether it be private operators or, or government operators that are bringing to, to adjacent worlds. Think things like agriculture and uh, engineering, and construction, the, the 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 availability of geospatial data and how much you can process what's happening in real time through now these, these networks of LEO satellites is, is really unlocking a, a crazy amount of innovation as well. So that, that'd be a great conversation to have done. Outstanding. Right? So look, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the mic for, uh, for, for the moment and say this, that, you know, look, I, I've asked you a whole bunch of questions They're They're, you know, for me, they were the areas that I was particularly keen to understand and what people who watched the channel were posing before we jumped on this call. So maybe you could, you know, take the mic back for a moment and think, what question didn't John ask me that he should have? Uh, so what are those things that, you know, you really want to highlight uh, to people watching who are particularly curious about uh, the use of applied technologies in the aerospace uh, environment? Yeah, I think the most important thing is that we have transitioned from a world where um, cloud was an IT-led discussion to now where cloud is a fully integrated business discussion. So while, while IT will obviously be involved and, and needs to be part of that discussion, what we really see now is more and more business leaders, whether that's heads of manufacturing, supply chain, passenger experience, connectivity, any of those things, starting to challenge what can AWS and, and the cloud bring to help them enhance their bottom lines, grow their revenues, what is unlocking data and due to monetization opportunities in their business. So it, it's really important that line of business leaders think a little bit about what does cloud do for them as opposed to it being sort of, well, that's the IT organization that does stuff that used to be called servers and now they're in the cloud. It's an, it, it, The discussion is much more a business-centric and a business-led conversation right now with IT being a critically important partner. So that's the most important thing I think that, that we want to continue to to help our customers understand. That's fantastic. And I'd say, you know, look, there's a whole series of videos out there, guys, that we've done quite recently where we have posed questions such as, if your supply chain leaked like this, you'd be sacked. And we've used that as a way of talking and exploring how business leaders need to you know, treat cloud spend and treat cloud utilization like any other asset across your entire platform. You need to be, you know, you don't necessarily need to be able to program in Python, but you do need to understand cloud and you do need to understand how the cost drivers in cloud impact your bottom line. And more importantly, how to leverage that in order to enhance your profitability. So if you've enjoyed watching this, then please, you know, throw some comments in. We'll get Tim back on another uh, call. We're going to be discussing defense and geospatial and all other stuff. But I'm very happy to bring the questions back uh, to Tim. Tim, thanks very much, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, having you back on the, uh, on the channel. Uh, and we look forward to staying in touch. Thanks, John. It was great talking to you.